I'm so delighted to be joined by the communication guru, John French, and forgive us for being a few minutes late. As you have probably all experienced at some point, my communicating with John in South Africa. And one of the things I've spoken about a lot on Ramplify is your ability to handle things not going perfectly well. So John, once again, we've had to deal with that. This is, it, it seems to happen, right? But I, as you say, it's not what happens, it's how we handle it. So I'm delighted I finally got you here on this platform live and we are talking to communication guru john french all the way from south africa hello john hi nadia it's wonderful to finally be here <laughs> yes, exactly. um so we're talking about navigating the new normal persuasion influence connection communication in what is a abnormal normal. So first of all, let's unpack for a moment, the two of us, what the new normal is. I'll tell you what I say, and then I'm curious to hear what you say. I say the new normal is a world of an expanding virtual world and a decreasing attention span. Well, Nadia, I think you're 100% correct. We've all crossed a threshold and we all have a digital and a virtual identity at this stage. And those people that haven't upskilled or made the transition don't really exist, unfortunately, in this 21st century world. Mm -hmm. So we're there, we're not going back. <laughs> that is just so well put. So, you know, I like to make these Ramplify podcasts around concrete, hardcore takeaways. And the first thing is, what do you need to be upskilling in, right? And I know that the people who are joining us right now, the fact that they're on LinkedIn and YouTube and Facebook are pretty savvy, but have you heard of Clubhouse, John? Um, in the old-fashioned sense, definitely I've heard of Clubhouse. Um, but, you know, I think the big thing is, I mean, you and I have both trained presentation skills for donkey's years. And, I mean, so many of my clients are, are, have 20, 30 years experience presenting. But what they don't have, Nadia, is what you do and I do to a lesser extent, and that is broadcasting skills. Everybody has become a broadcaster. Everyone's home has become a recording studio. And that's a hugely steep learning curve. But John, what you do do and so skillfully is help people learn to be more persuasive, influential, package their ideas. You have a legal background and you've been working with venture capitalists on taking their idea and presenting it succinctly, both in terms of message and delivery. So what advice do we have to individuals, let's say they're in pharma sales, about using their virtual interactions to deepen the relationship and ensure they're as persuasive and influential as they can be? Well, Nadia, I think everybody has to admit is we're living in a virtual world now. We can't, there's nothing stronger than face-to-face -face communication. That real human and emotional contact is no longer there to the degree that we had it. But we're living in a virtual world and a very broken economy in a virtual world. And that's why sales are not as easy as they used to be. Money doesn't flow like it used to. And that's why I think everybody, especially if you're in sales, or have your own business, you've got to up your game in terms of building virtual relationships and leveraging them and selling to your clients. If you're just joining us, I'm talking to John French, communication guru all the way from South Africa. He is a masterful communication trainer, consultant, and just a treat to have with me here on this lovely Monday. John, something you speak about and I speak about, the first step in this interaction is the building of trust. And we think it's all about what we say and are we offering the best possible service? But, you know, do we build that moment of trust? And it is so much harder to do virtually because we don't have that organic interaction. I think it goes deeper than that, Nadia, because we're trusting far less than we used to. Mm. Everybody you meet can give you a disease. Anything you touch can kill you. So I think our, our trust quotient and our ability to trust has gone down fundamentally. Oh. And I want to ask you is, do you know how long does it take us to make that judgment call on can we trust a supplier? How long do you think that we, it takes us to create that impression on trust? There is new research. 
and you've shared it with me, but I'd love you to share it with the audience. All right. Two researchers, University of Princeton in the States where you are, did a research survey and they came to the conclusion that we judge trust the quickest above uh, likability, above competence. And we judge trust in one tenth of a second. It's instantaneous. Do I feel psychologically safe with you? So that first impression is pivotal and even more so in a virtual world where they can see into your home, they can see way past the little facade you might have been able to keep up in the real world. That is such an interesting thing. So I always say the key to online virtual trust, first of all, just a simple tip like having your camera on, John. You know, recently I was speaking to somebody and I was talking about strategy online and she'd set up a meeting with me and did not have her camera on. And when I said to her, um, one of the things I teach is just the importance of having your camera on, her response to me was, I'm so busy taking notes and I line these calls one up after the other. And I understand that. But for me, that was such a missed opportunity for her not to have her camera on so I could see her. And the first thing was seeing this very glamorous photograph and missing a chance to say, I care enough about you to show up on camera. Well, Nadia, I think it goes back to marketing or sales 101. And marketing and sales is all about visibility. If you suddenly can't see me, <laughs> what yeah. happened to my impact? Then Gone. I see a beautiful Cape Town apartments, I have to say. <laughs> but yes. it's, all, it, it's about visibility, Nadia, and that's why you have to be seen. It's a visual medium. If you can't see a brand, it does not exist, whether it's a person or an entity. And that's why you've got to be there. You've got to be visual. You can't build a relationship with a black screen. You can't sell to a black screen. We have to see each other like you and I are seeing each other now. And I think, again, I understand, John, people get tired. You're watching this. You know, we speak about Zoom fatigue, Microsoft Teams fatigue, WebEx fatigue. It's real. So my advice to people, and I'm curious what you say to clients, I say where possible, have your camera on. Where possible. Now, there may be times where you literally can't and then say, apologies, I don't have my camera on. I'm in transit. Or at least have a photograph of yourself that represents you in a friendly, positive way. I urge people not to have the glamour shot and not to have something that's just the black screen with your name. So if you're going to not be there, like the picture I have of you right now, that would be a big shot. If you, That would be a good shot if you couldn't be in the meeting. I think, Nadia, I think what's so, so important, if you can't for whatever reason um, stream yourself and an image of yourself is try and manage expectations before the meeting. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there's nothing worse. Imagine trying to interview someone that's just not, not visual or not visually there is try and manage expectations beforehand. But, you know, I think people's appetite uh, for sort of empathy has gone up tremendously. So if you are in your car traveling somewhere or if you don't look your 100% best, I think that can be forgiven far more now than before, as long as you manage the expectation and you tell people what your sort of burdens or situation is. Otherwise, you force them to make an assumption and it's never in your favor. That is so well put. In the absence of proper information, people come to their own conclusions. Excellent. Yeah, so, John, we speak about trust. And what else can we do in that split second? You have been so eloquent in our conversations around people needing to feel safe with you. I quote Caldini, who says, what about your presence makes me feel that if there was a storm, you could take care of me? And, and that level of trust and protection is so critical in your ability to persuade and influence. And you can be looking for a promotion. You can be in a position where you're not in leadership, but you aspire to it and you have to show that level of potential. So are you showing up? I think, yes, exactly, Gnadi. I think it's, we need to think what, how do we judge trust or, or how do we assess someone? And that, 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 that assessment is largely visual. You know that old Moravian research project where 55% 55, 55 of our impact is nonverbal. 
So it's everything from what is in your virtual background? What are you wearing? What is your body language saying? What is your facial animation saying? Are you making eye contact? Those are all things that we can consciously control, control to make a pleasing and a safe impact to create that psychological safety. So I think it all starts with our visual impact. What are you projecting visually? Because about 84% of what people learn is through the eyes. They're going to say, I saw Nadia on TV. They're not going to say, I heard her. So we trust the visual sense the most. And again, that reiterates why your visual impact is so incredibly important. Mm. And just again, now I have a green screen behind me. So I have the studio because part of my branding is a show. But interestingly enough, and I had this conversation with a digital media producer recently, Dave Summers, and we spoke about my background represents something, but it may be seen as being a broadcaster versus what I really do, which is teach communication skills and presentation skills, yours in many ways is more authentic because it shows a real background and a real person. So it's interesting when you really analyze that and is your background serving you? So yours comes across as a bookshelf and maybe, and I know you sometimes use virtual backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So I'd love your thoughts on virtual backgrounds and then I'll certainly give mine. All right, Nada, if you just, let's use you as an example. I mean, you are, no, you, you became famous as a broadcaster. So in terms of your brand collateral, that is something you need to leverage. So I think your virtual background is appropriate and it's brilliant. The moment we see it, we identify you with success and international broadcasting corporations, et cetera, et cetera. So even though it may not be your focus at the moment, I think in terms of being behind you and that collateral being behind you, 10 out of 10. I don't think you can improve that. Well, it's interesting, though, because I appreciate what you're saying, but I think we all have to look at ourselves and say, when does the green screen serve us? When I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with a client, John, or I'm speaking to a group, I don't have this background behind me mm. because that's not where they're at. I'm talking to them about communication skills or dealing with conflict or networking and i need to be more of a real person mm. so can you see so to your point thank you for saying that now do you change your background depending on who you're speaking to and who your current group of um participants are absolutely nadia i mean obviously teaching virtual presentation skills and virtual communication skills you've got to demonstrate all of these things um i i've just come in from another meeting so I didn't have time. I mean, I, I I have a green screen, but I didn't even have time to put it up. So, you know, when I built my my office, I had it built in mind of actually using it as a recording platform. So, I mean, this background works fairly well. Um, virtual backgrounds doing in, they actually do improve your lighting. So, in terms of your face illumination, that is improved with a, a virtual um, background. So, you increase your visual impact. The big thing is, as you know, you've got to use a green screen. Otherwise, your hair bleeds, your shoulders distort, and it doesn't look very professional. And the average person doesn't have a green screen or know how to, how to use one effectively. So, you know, I chop and change, but I love virtual backgrounds. The, the biggest reason I love them is it shields a person's home. It gives you privacy. Okay. So, and again, that's something that when i'm talking to pharma reps or physicians mm -hmm. i want people to be able to see their home because we want that level of trust and authenticity right but make sure that your background i always say is credible not incredible and incredible can be anything from too much yeah. to too messy you know i think it goes back to marketing again because your 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 home your background your your virtual background whatever's behind you is now an extension of you as a personal it's part of your personal brand if it's messy behind you you aren't judged on that mess it is who you are and you know the average person with family and children and animals doesn't have the luxury of a clean study or their own study or something In that like that case, yes so, you know, your, your background is an extension of your brand and you are judged according to it. So, you know what? Quick fix, show up a virtual background. You can be anywhere. 
as long as you get the lighting right, because if you don't have front lighting, they distort terribly, as you know. Uh, and, and, you know, for me, and I say to people, wherever you're at, whatever your budget is, these things are relatively inexpensive. And, you know, another year into virtual communication, we need to make sure that we've taken ourselves to another level. What was acceptable in March of last year, while people are very forgiving, and I like what you say, you know, their level of empathy, there's still an expectation that is greater now. Now, John, something I'm noticing, you're wearing a jacket. So let's talk for a moment about what one wears in terms of trust. You know, again, visual impact, your nonverbal communication skills, Trust is creating psychological safety. And the biggest thing is you've got to address appropriate to the expectation of your stakeholders or clients. You know, I'm seeing, I mean, I work a huge amount with asset management, mass asset managers who are traditionally very conservative, very smart. But even they are saying to me, why do you look so smart? Relax, calm down. <laughs> um, Every generally everybody is working from home and it's become a, a quick accepted norm that things are more relaxed. But you know what, if it's a first meeting with someone or if it's an interview with someone, I want to make sure I do everything to make them trust me so that I can influence them if I need to. So I always say do what is appropriate to your own personality, be a great brand ambassador for your business, but also meet the expectations of the people viewing you. And it's interesting because years of working at CNN, if a guest used to say, what should I wear? I would always say wear some kind of jacket like you're doing, even if you're wearing a t-shirt, because a jacket gives you SPNF, structure, proportion, and fit. So your level of structure, proportion, and fit is directly proportional with how formal you want to look. So if you were wearing a full collared shirt and a tie, having that jacket would be so much more formal, but because you're wearing a t-shirt under, you've still got the structure, proportion and fit, but without the formality. And I tend to, when I'm needing to come across as authoritative, wear some kind of garment that gives me structure, proportion and fit. And as you say, you don't want to look too formal. So you kicked it down a notch by putting on the t-shirt, but one's shape is enhanced by wearing a jacket. And it gives, uh, yeah. it gives you strength and structure. Um, I do find, I mean, for my business meetings this morning, I had a, a normal work shirt on. Plain striking. It was more hip for me, I know. Thank you, John. No, but it, honestly, it dies on, on, on camera. I find that the mo as, even though I'm wearing a T-shirt, a bit it's of a good color, color. You know, you wear a little bit of color, your visual impact goes up. And you know what, just as long as you've strengthened it and given it structure and that touch of formality, I find it is acceptable. And I think that's one of the big business decisions I've made is going forward, even though I work with financiers and asset managers, even when I go into the offices going forward, I'm going to be dressed a little bit more relaxed, but I keep the jacket on. If I sat here in a t-shirt, uh, mm -hmm. you'd probably question my credibility a little bit more. Or well, as you say, that Erin Brockovich moment, it would take longer because, yes, she had it all. But if you think of Erin Brockovich wasn't taken seriously because of what she looked like, I mean, in the end, it didn't matter. But we're talking about trust and first impressions mm -hmm. and adapting to the new normal. Something I want to now bridge. And by the way, if you are just joining us, I'm Nadia Bilchik. I'm talking to John French out of Cape Town, South Africa. He's known as the communication guru. We're going to have a show, right, John? We're going to call it the communication power hour, where you can ask us your questions. That sounds fantastic. That's where the and magic happens. Yeah. Exactly. And just what John and I really wanted to bring to you this morning was that we are navigating it becomes a cliche to say the new normal, but we're navigating expanding, continuing virtual worlds, decreasing attention spans. And I love what you said earlier, John, decreasing trust. People are weary, they worn out. So how do each of us, what can we do to ensure that we are making the most of those interactions? Now let's talk about presentations. So for you, virtual presentations and by the way you don't need to be giving a formal presentation it's about speaking up in a meeting offering advice or guidance 
presenting one idea, you are still speaking, any form of communication virtually, what do you see the biggest, biggest mistakes that people make are and what advice and guidance can we give? Well, I think now the biggest mistake that people make uh, is what we've already talked about is they don't turn their cameras on. And that means that they've got no visibility and they've got absolutely no impact. They do not exist in that meeting at all. So number one is please turn your cameras on. And you know what, we are the pioneers and the guinea pigs in this whole virtual world. So we are making all the mistakes. The average person has no clue and no consciousness about how to do it professionally. So there's a lot to learn. So turn your cameras on. Then as you know, uh, as a very beautiful woman, the next trick is to get your lighting right because lighting is make or break. You get your lighting right, suddenly you look a million times better. You have enhanced professionalism, you have an enhanced presence. And you know, there are a couple of tricks and again, not expensive tricks, but you've got to get your lighting right followed by camera angle and then eye contact. Yes, yes, and yes. And in terms of information, what I'm seeing is people want shorter meetings. They want shorter interactions. I was thinking if we could create how to halve your meeting time and increase your meeting efficacy, people would be delighted. So again, and you and I have been speaking about this for years, telling people you don't need to share all the information. What are the nuggets? What do people need to think, feel, and do, right? And then am I crafting my communication accordingly? I can send them an email with the additional data. Just make it as short and succinct as possible. You know, Nadia, there's a wonderful quote that actually said, when you ask how long should a presentation be or how long should a meeting be, and I, the answer to that you may have heard is it should be as long as a lady's dress. <laughs> Long enough to cover the subject, but short enough to be interesting. I think that's excellent. Oh my gosh, that is so good. So make it short. And interesting is so important. And it doesn't matter whether you are a biotech company, whether you are a physician, whether you are in retail, whether you are a lawyer. I mean, everybody is having to deal with this. And whatever part or point of your career you're at. Now, do you find right now you're doing more groups or more individuals? I'd say both. Um, you know what, you know, some people want individual input, um, are doing a lot of groups in terms of virtual presentation skills, virtual pitching and sales skills, negotiation. So it's a combination of both. Uh, some people start off with a bit of individual coaching and support to get them to a certain level. But the groups are, are, are pretty busy at this point in time. Right. And really just working with them on the concept of virtual engagement. So I'm Nadia Bilchik. I'm talking to communication guru John French. We're discussing navigating expanding virtual worlds. I'm going to leave you with my final tips and then ask John if you want to reach either of us, if you want to have an informational session with either of us on how we can help you together work with you or your team on upping their virtual game. My website is nadiaspeaks.com. John's is www.communicationguru.co.za. And you can always reach him through me as well, because if you don't know .co.za, that is South Africa, or we, we say ZA or ZA. And there was something else you said that I thought, oh, this, um, we have a slightly different um, translation and I can't remember what it was right now but you know in South Africa for example you call what you call a biscuit we call a cookie what you call a scone we call a biscuit you know that what you call a boot we call a trunk and what you say is to hoot we say is to honk talk about last translation absolutely <laughs> so my final advice to you on this monday morning and then i want john to share his wisdom because that's our goal in ramping up your impact and amplifying your reach and that is be intentional i say take yourself off autopilot because you cannot just be automatic in anything you do now the key is to be deliberate and the famous saying whatever's got you to this point is not necessarily what's going to take you to the next point in your life, right? So what are you doing to ensure that your interactions are engaging? What are you doing to ensure that 
you are giving your audience or your clients or your customer what they need. And if it is as a manager, are you really checking in? Are you seeing how your employees are doing? Because people are motivated by you caring for them. So that's my thoughts about this Monday in the new normal. John? And my message to everybody is upskill yourself so that you can learn to trust yourself. You've got to learn to trust yourself before anybody else. And if you learn these virtual communication skills, you do begin to trust yourself more in any situation. And that shines. That gets attention. That creates trust. That builds uh, influence and impact. And that helps you to build your life. I love that, John. Say that again. So in order, you want people to trust you. You want to first trust yourself. It has to start with self-trust. And you can only trust yourself or, or a situation if you learn to upskill yourself so that you can navigate your way through this virtual medium. What a beautiful way to end. I'm so delighted that you and I have shared this platform. John French, communication guru. Nadia Belchik, Nadia Speaks, and I hope you ramplify your week, and that means ramp up wherever you're at to amplify your impact.